maybe, maybe guys, if you just come across that way a little bit more, the whole board should be behind you. Okay. Um, so David, one of the big questions that uh, interests in the clubs were hoping to get from is to see what sort of revenue they might get from the new team. They currently don't get much from the NRL. Are we going to see some changes there in the next uh, year or so? I think we all know we're going to do a good media deal, and that's going to provide greater money for every area of the game. From the NRL clubs to the NRL players down into the grassroots, and, and obviously a state-based competition uh, like the Queensland Cup is going to benefit from that. Now, I can't put any precision around the amounts, uh, but I can say that there are a lot of mouths to feed in rugby league. We're going to come to a position where we are going to be able to feed them better, uh, and that's a good thing for the game. About more TV exposure for the uh, is that I understand they're finally going to film some games up in the regional areas, but are we going to maybe see more of those games on TV? I think it's a possibility. Um, obviously, the way media is gone, the number of platforms, the number of channels, uh, the number of people that are looking for content, um, then compelling content like those games, uh, it's got to be a good chance of getting greater broadcast time. Skills that we demonstrate to our players is, is unbelievable. You know, we want more of that. Gosh, how did he do that sort of money in the game? And there's plenty of those already. So, you know, be very confident about what we've got. We've got a very, very good game, and we've got quite good structures in place to bring players through. So, we actually talk about the statistics in some of the areas like Greater West and Sydney, which we don't get to talk about, which we will. And we've got enormous penetration in those two because it's hard to grab ground Selling the game globally, what does that mean? Selling the game globally, well, you know, we have one of the benefits we have over, over AFL, if you like, and a lot of sports in Australia is we do have a global competition. Now, we can talk about whether that's competitive or not. We need to work to make it more competitive. And certainly, David can give a point of view about the international administration activities, if you like. But that is an opportunity to keep building this game locally and internationally. Could we see big club company overseas getting involved in rugby league out there as a sponsor or any way trying to attach itself to rugby league? I think the World Cup coming up in 2013 is another opportunity to showcase the game internationally and importantly the competitiveness of our game internationally. Uh, you know, we can genuinely run perhaps not as big a World Cup as other sports, but we can run a World Cup where there's genuine competition among the teams. 2013 will be another opportunity for that. David, uh, the Sunshine Coast Queensland Cup side that we have up here used to be affiliated with Manly and they of course pulled out a couple of years ago. Um, a few people raised some concern that uh, they thought it was the wrong move by the New South Wales Rugby League. Um, do you, would you like to see that come back again, some New South Wales uh, clubs affiliating with the Queensland Cup clubs? Oh, not necessarily. I think it was important at that point that New South Wales uh, had their players playing in their State Cup rather than Queensland, Queensland's State Cup. Uh, we want the New South Wales Cup to be a strong competition. Uh, New South Wales Cup people look enviously at the strength of the Queensland Cup. Uh, so while it, it might have caused some hiccups because there wasn't access to those players, it's important the New South Wales Cup is a strong competition. And, 
and as we've talked about today, you know, the possibility of the state cups teams playing each other at the end of the year, I think is an exciting one. Is expansion likely to be affected at all with this, I guess, scrum that's been going on about the uh, Optus uh, rights with the sport? Is that is that likely to affect any expansion, like in Perth or Central Queensland? Uh, it has the potential to devalue our rights, and devaluing our rights means less money comes into the game. If we've got less money, then expansion becomes a more difficult exercise. Expansion is something that the Commission uh, are going to look at, and uh, we need to be conscious that what is the great strength of rugby league at the moment is those eight close games. Um, we, want our, we want our clubs to be strong, our players to be earning more money before we start thinking about expansion. And that's why the battle could be on the eight ball. I mean, where, where are the rights at the moment? Well, we're hopeful it will get resolved um, so that it doesn't impact on the negotiations that we've just started. But certainly one of the issues that we're pressing with the government is the urgency uh, because we don't want to do these deals in a period of uncertainty about who can sell what rights exclusively. Well, uh, you know, John's had the fortune of, of the delay in the formations given him six months to have a lot of people in his ear and um, uh, I'm sure that he's quite capable of being a good listener, uh, realising that there's a lot of emotion attached to the game, but uh, with that emotion can, can sometimes come a, a distortion of, of common sense, and, and, and that's all part of the game. Uh, but as long as we make our decisions based on the facts with careful analysis, uh, then we'll be in good shape, and I'm sure John and the other commissioners are quite capable of that. They, they're very experienced people in the community, in their own businesses, and that's one of the reasons that we go into this in such good shape. Is the honeymoon period for the Commission as simple as this until now and, and when you announce the result of the television rights for the broadcast rights? No, I mean, I, th I think there's a, there's a fair period of challenge coming up because, as I said inside, We'll do a good media deal as to how we then deal with the new money uh, that will be the challenge, but uh, there'll, there'll be some debate along the way, but there'll, there'll also be, I think, an exciting constant part of the game as well, because we can do a lot of good things with that money. David, the All-Stars game perhaps going to Townsville in the near future for a few years, is that a possibility? We've got one more year as part of our arrangement with the Queensland Government. It's certainly been very successful on the Gold Coast, not, not only uh, there, but the ability to bring people into the Gold Coast from all over the country. Um, we'll certainly, uh, over the next couple of months, have a look at where it should be played in 2013. Uh, and then after that, uh, it's, it's a big question because it's become such a successful event and uh, we'd like to see it shared around, but it's too early to speculate too much about that. Certainly Townsville has got to be a place with its hand up and a place we'd be excited about. Uh, to be able to get a game like that close to those remote communities would be exciting. Yes, getting up near the million dollar mark and you said we've got to look after our elite athletes in the game. How do you alleviate the concerns of, you know, the grassroots club, the largest revenue, you know, with all the down there and not getting soaked up at the top? No, I think we won't be talking about the general answer to that. You know, the, game, the game really should provide the players with the earnings that the game can support to and that they can generate. At the end of the day, my view is that players should look after themselves and their own future, so they've got to make the best deal for them. And if that deal means that they need to exit our game, then that's the way it leads to it. Now, we can't possibly match everything that's going to be in the appropriate um, But by the same token, you know, the players who leave the game leave with an expectation, expectation maybe of money, but they also think about how they're going to spend the rest of their lives. So I think, it, you know, I think, I think playing those sorts of numbers is again a bit. It's a bit insightful. Um, what we will try and do is make sure that we've got more money back to where the players are at the same level because we're never going to satisfy everyone's aspirations. What we need to do is bring more players into the game from the grassroots, which is where the practice needs to be. Cool. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Good day.